Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'd like to talk to you about our future. Now, at the moment, the future is extremely uncertain as we are again plunging into the second round of the pandemic. There are food shortages, there are energy shortages, there's going to be lots of price hikes, maybe hyperinflation, we'll have to see. Goods that we are used to are not going to be available. The way things are looking, I don't know what it is about mosquitoes, but they love me. The way things are looking at the moment is we're coming to a fork in the road. One way, we're going to be living in abject poverty, renting what we can't afford, drone shipped from Amazon, and still enslaved to cheap production from Asia. We have become a disposable society. We are used to buying lots and lots of things, many things we won't even use, and we're used to buying it cheaply. Our cupboards are filled with crap. The other fork in the road is more of an artisan, self-sufficient lifestyle for everyone. Now, bizarrely, this is one of the concepts the, the powers that be have for our future, where we won't earn as much money, we won't be employed in the same sort of jobs because of automation, but we'll be doing more things that we actually enjoy, more arts and crafts, and producing things on a much smaller scale, cottage industry, for our local area. Perhaps for export, but that's not the focus. Now, cottage industries are traditionally, they take a lot more time to produce an item and the cost of such item is much higher than in some huge automated factory but it's produced with care and attention skill expertise and love artisan made prod products they're not disposable quite often they're made specifically for the customer's requirement This is the other fork. The other day, a member of my extended family popped in to visit me. And sometimes I visit them when I'm riding past the lake because their property is next to a, a big lake, Lake Tamasha, about 30 miles away from where I live. But as he was in the area, he popped in to drop off some of his product. Now, what this is, is elderberry syrup. Well, actually, elderflower syrup. And it's for medicinal use. Pauli, this uh, 
the brother-in-law of my brother-in-law, he and his wife, my brother-in-law's sister, they took over the family business, my brother-in-law's family's business, which his parents started many years ago, and which is basically professional foraging. They forage and grow various herbs. They dry them and then turn them either into medicinal syrups or into tea, medicinal tea, for sale locally and for export. And this is a very small cottage industry, but they earn a very nice lifestyle from it. And it seems to be getting bigger and bigger. The more they're investing into machinery, uh, the bigger it gets. Simultaneously, they're also supporting the local people because they pay villagers for bringing them herbs and berries that they have foraged in the forest. So, the villagers... Ah! Today it's deer louse flies. These aren't mosquitoes, these are deer louse flies. They're horrible creatures. So the villagers benefit as well from a small cottage industry based on nature and not destroying nature, but carefully taking what you need and each year cultivating it so it grows back In a future video, I hope to make a specific video just about them, their company, and the, the entire process. Because it's something I really, really support. I think it's fantastic. They are living the forager's dream. If we all decide to take this other fork in the road, We have to ask ourselves what craft, what skill, what service would we like to provide to other people. Now for many years I've been a painter and I hold exhibitions once a year, once every two years in different towns and for the last several years I've just been painting oil on animal skins, animal hides. These are animals that have been shot in my region, in the Carpathian Mountains. Wild boar, red deer, fallow deer, uh, mouflon. I paint on them and I sell the painting. There is quite a spiritual aspect to the reason why I'm using animal skins and that's because hunters generally just throw away the skin when they take the meat. These skins have bullet holes in them, entry and exit wounds, and they're treated so they keep the fur. And for me, by painting on them and basically making them a piece of art, it gives sense to the creature's death. Not sense, but maybe an apology for the creature's death. The creature lives on partially in memory. As I said, it's a spiritual thing. So for myself, perhaps I could paint I like working with wood. I've built my gazebo, my woodshed. Uh, there are things I like making with wood. Stone cladding. I stone clad my kitchen. Natural materials, ancient, ancient professions. And I think these are gonna come back. I really do. What I'd like you to do is have a think, what would you like to do if we took that other fork? The first fork, we're gonna end up like Blade Runner. 
or the fifth element locked in some tiny tiny flat in some skyscraper and eating artificial meat if we can afford it and having our lives based on some social credit score which can be accessed via our new pass on our mobile phones that's the other option but if we do take this fork what would you like to do because this is looking more and more of a possibility I can see in the near future working hours being reduced working days being reduced and we're going to have a lot of free time on our hands so if you would in the comments please say what you think you're good at what you would like to become good at what skill you can offer the local society around you and which would sustain you and your family please write in the comments I really want to hear as always be free